So I have here uh, the bridge block prototype I've built and this was done uh, actually on a vertical bandsaw identical to what Jack has only with a few more uh, hours of operation under its belt and a uh, table saw with a aluminum blade on it. One of the things that I was wanting to work towards is of course modularity, flexibility, and uh, safety of course and all that keeping in mind with balancing it in a uh, vehicle where you may or may not want to access a single cell uh, it needs to be uh, somewhat individualized. Uh, the dilemma I see with some of the uh, more monolithic designs and what Jack described on the blog the other day is the idea of having a rod going through all of your cells and if you have you know ten individual cells like would be joined with this block that's not a big deal. When you have forty or fifty being combined um, then you run into an issue of having this long rod that you got to pull in and out of the pack while it's mounted into the car. So uh, for that reason, for serviceability, I would prefer a uh, more individualized system. Now this is a bit more uh, simplified than what Jack demonstrated where he had uh, all of the uh, common blocks put together with an angle tap coming up and then all the common blocks on a separate uh, parallel pack coming up to an angle and then a strap going across there. This combines both. And so what I've done is uh, after spending several hours in SketchUp playing with different ideas, I've put together a uh, wedge and ramp design that the wedge and ramp of course are in the center of the block so on the left side here you have uh, one parallel uh, cell of five and then on the other side, so you get your positive here and negative there uh, per se. And you'd have these staggered across your entire pack. And um, the concept here is you would have all of your cells already set up vertically. And you would drop the uh, steel band around the collection of a total of 10 tabs in this case. And then uh, drop in the wedge block in the center and then begin interleaving these individual blocks with the tabs. And then once you're done, go ahead and uh, tighten it down. That would force this wedge up, creating tension against the uh, stainless steel band. Now here I have just a uh, hose clamp that I got from the hardware store. Uh, it's not what I would really want to do. Uh, my intention is to have a uh, single band that is welded in a, in just, you know, on one side here to where it would be solid all the way around. I uh, pre-break each corner to keep it as crisp as possible so to minimize uh, a bending effect where it would bow out. Um, that way I can have a, uh, a more precise and consistent tension across the whole thing. Now th the reason that I want to wedge it from the middle and press out versus just taking this and wrenching it down is uh, consistency with pressure. Uh, generally with these hose clamps one side will kind of hold its position and the other side will get pulled in. Um, if, if you were to do that in this case then uh, one side would be tighter than the other and we don't want that. And I've chosen to use two screws for a similar reason. They can go ahead and uh, pull the wedge up and equalize the pressure on each side. So it may or may not in the end be perfectly uh, parallel coming up. You know, it might be possible that the, the wedge would be crooked. But so long as you have the even pressure, um, you'd be you know, good to go. Now I did this with a seven degree incline, which unless my math is wrong, will give about an eight to one multiplication of force directed upward on the wedge against the ramps. It'll be eight times that force directed against the tabs and held in with the uh, steel band. So uh, you can be pretty hard pressed to find a more snug connector. Uh, once this is down uh, and clamped in, this is 
very solid. I cannot twist it. I cannot shift any of these. It's, it's good to go. Now that's just one part of it. Now the other part is now we've got <clears throat> this chunk of aluminum, which I haven't done the math to recall off the top of my head how much this weighs, but it's not a trivial amount. And in a car, I wouldn't want this bouncing around, shaking and, and flexing those tabs. Now one side is copper, one side is aluminum. I work with aluminum on a regular basis, and you know you can get a thousand flexes when you do that. But if you do much more than that, you only get you know a handful of flexes. And if you were to break your aluminum uh, at a 90, you only get one shot. Once it's there, if you straighten it back out, you know have a crack forming uh, on that edge, and it will tear. So we don't want this to be floating around freely. How do we fasten it into place? Well. Over top all of that, we have this Lexan sheet. Now this is just a piece of scrap that I got. Uh, it's not nearly as thick as I would intend to uh, put into the uh, full prototype. Uh, right now I'm thinking just an um, eighth inch, 0.125, uh, ought to be thick enough uh, for this purpose. So again, you can imagine this, this is an end block right here. Um, and I don't have it uh, done the way I fully intend to, um, this quarter inch thick block I'd rather have sticking out and then be able to just bolt a lug onto that tab. And um, that would be your final connecting point of your entire uh, package. But yeah, so you would set the ring around your tabs and then populate these into that uh, ring and then set the plexiglass over that and then tighten these screws down and the screws uh, lock this whole block as you can see quite solidly to the plexiglass. Uh, if I try to move this the, the plexiglass flexes but it doesn't allow the block to move anywhere in any direction. So that is the general premise of what I'm putting together and uh, in significant quantities I'm estimating somewhere in the neighborhood of needing to produce uh, well over 2,000 individual blocks. Um, if you get to that scale, then I would have the wedges and uh, ramps extruded. However, uh, below that quantity, it's pretty simple to just uh, run it through the blade at an angle and then go from there. Um, one of the things that I've kind of discerned is these are not perfectly flat and you can see how they kind of raise up and down. That's a symptom of this band not being exactly what I originally designed it to be. Uh, the intent is that uh, against the little hook edge on the uh, ramps, the, the two ramps here have the little tabs that stick out and these others only have the shoulders up on top. And so the intent is that the wedge will pull up on the ramps, the ramps with these little uh, tabs will pull up on the band and the band will lift up on all the shoulders and lifting all of the block straight up to that Lexan. Um, and then of course at the same time uh, tensioning horizontally to uh, bind all the tabs in solidly. So this first prototype I've been sitting on for about a week and a half and uh, just looking at it, uh, feeling it, uh, tightening it, loosening it. Uh, my biggest concern at this point, uh, frankly, is how easy it is to loosen the screws. Now I mentioned that 8 to 1 compression. If uh, I just loosen it a little bit, it is free to spin. And the tension against the wedge keeps the block firmly seated. So these can come completely loose and the block is still solid. It's not until you actually are able to knock that wedge loose from that horizontal tension that things really start to be able to move. But 